uh, it has been a while. And uh, I'm curious, uh, how long had this idea been gestating for? Um, had you been kind of kicking it around a bit, or did it come to you uh, um, in a sudden rush? Well, it came uh, about five years ago. Uh, one night I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine, and we were talking about, at that time, there had been about four or five high school kids in Canada who had committed suicide because they were um, being bullied at school because they were either gay or perceived to be gay. And he was suggesting that we make a film about it. And I didn't want to make a film about kids who um, took their lives. And that was kind of in the conversation. And then that night I had a dream where there was a, a, a young man was in the kitchen talking to his mother. And uh, I just woke up the next morning and started writing some words down. And none of those words from that dream ended up in the film, but it just, you know, it was a, it was a launching point. And um, with the casting process, I mean, I imagine that you perhaps knew, there we go, <laughs> some minor adjustments. Yes. Uh, I imagine you had a sense, perhaps, what you were looking for from someone like Kyle McLaughlin or Maria Bello, but, uh, and, and what they might bring to the, to the film as uh, those kind of grounding, established figures. Uh, but the, the younger actors in the film, like Josh and Darren, um, was that a, a process to find them? Uh, what, were, do, what you were looking for, did it change in terms of what they actually presented in the audition process? Well, so uh, Josh Wiggins, who plays Frankie, we actually offered him the role uh, because he had worked with on another film with um, Alison Black, who produced this film, and she spoke really highly of him, and I'd seen his other work and knew he was really good, and so I had a conversation with him, and I was convinced that he could do a great job because he's just so smart and sensitive and um, thoughtful. Uh, and then when it came to casting the other characters, yeah, we did some casting calls in Toronto and here in Los Angeles. And uh, Darren, actually, we saw, I can't remember who played Ballas. We saw him, I think, you know, in the first half of the session, and we were really impressed with him. We liked him a lot. Um, but we kept looking around, and just, you know, nobody really matched him. You know, he does a a great job uh, in presenting, I think, some vulnerability to, to that character. Uh, and so it, was, it, wasn't, it was hard to find people who would play both sides, you know. A lot of the men who came out just kind of played a jock. Uh, and then Taylor, we got a tape with her on it and she was just like amazing. And again, we were really keen on her. We thought she was fantastic, but we looked around a bit more. And anyways, we came back to the three that we initially thought were really great. It is, um, you know, the, the film does really tie into the, the volatility of, uh, of those young relationships and, and how quickly they can be, even sometimes without it's such a dramatic event, the, the context of them can change, the dynamic can change so dramatically. And um, what did you kind of tap into as a writer to, uh, to try to find some of that from, uh, from younger days? Um, yeah, the writer question is always a tough one because I just seem so... Uh, I don't know, automatic or largely unconscious, but um, I guess, you know, I just, my whole life I've been someone who's just, uh, for whatever reason, I've paid a lot of attention to human behavior. I studied people a lot when I was younger. Um, I was always trying to figure out why they were doing what they were doing and what their inner worlds were like. So uh, I just, I just, you know, I paid attention, and I, I guess I still pay attention. So I just tap into when something inspires me, when I have inspiration for some story, it's usually coming from a very, uh, on some level, a very personal place, and I just try to, when I write, um, I try to see the film and see the behavior and, and get her as accurate, accurate as I possibly can in my own mind before I, I would call it uh, ready to show people. Yeah. Uh, do yeah. we have questions up here in the audience? Right in the front row. And I, it was interesting because at the beginning it felt like Frankie had his own soundtrack going in his ears, which we all do, right? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the party, his soundtrack disappeared, and then it came back at the end. I just wondered. Yeah, well, um, yeah, that very much was the idea that it, it, it was kind of his soundtrack. And we, myself and the producer, Alison Black, and we were discussing the film and how we were going to present it. We we really wanted to we wanted the film to become like a pop song, like, you know, a good pop song. That at first you just it just catches you, it pulls you 
man, he seems familiar, he seems comfortable and enjoyable. And then by the end of it, you realize, oh wow, there's something else going on in this pop song. Um, so that's, we wanted to make a film that was kind of like that. And so the music was a big part of that. Just pulling people in and making them feel very feel comfortable. And, uh, and, and then, you know, try to, yeah, bring uh, some depth to that. Well, the film screens again tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, and uh, so if you new people who couldn't make it today, please go and see it. But we thank Keith for being here. We hope we have you back very soon. Thank you.